Hello. Welcome to this video, in which we will look at how to manage a company's reverse logistics processes in an orderly fashion, to maintain control throughout the execution of returns. We will start examining the benefits to be achieved, by controlling and taking charge of the reverse logistics process. The customer experience will be improved, and by having a uniform and clear returns process, all process steps will be controlled and quickly executable. Having the entire end-to-end -end process visible will give transparency and clarity for everyone who must decide on an action. Logistics handling costs is minimized through limiting the number of touches in the returns process and replacement and refunds during warranty periods will be controlled through actual logistics events. Let us look at the concept. Traditionally, logistics has focused on moving goods from a provider to the user. Reverse logistics is basically the same process, however, it is in done in the reverse order. As distribution models have evolved and quantities transported through our logistics networks has increased, so has the need to for a streamlined reverse logistics process. The advanced customer returns process can manage both planned and unplanned returns. The customer contacting a sales representative and agreeing on return of product is an example of a planned return. The customer returning an item directly at a store without prior contact is an example of an unplanned return. When receiving the unplanned return, the recipient can inspect the goods directly at the time of the return, alternatively defer the decision on the status to a later step in the returns process. Planned returns is managed through either a physical return of the goods to the company or the supplier. In certain cases, where it's unfeasible to make a physical return, an inspection at the customer site is possible. If the inspection of the returned goods is deferred, where applicable, in the receiving location, for decision on how the returned goods will be handled. The outcome of inspection will clarify if the customer will be reimbursed. In this demonstration we will see the following happen. The customer will return five different products to the store. The first item returned is an MP3 player. Five players are returned, and they are to be received into the plant. The second item returned is a GPS navigator. These two are damaged and received into the plant. The laptops are the third item which is returned, and these will be shipped directly to the supplier. The mobile phones, which were purchased by the customer, are returned and received to the plant. The last item, the PlayStation, is sent directly to the supplier. This walkthrough may leave you with the impression that a lot of manual effort is needed to drive the process. The steps are performed manually for illustrative purposes, but can be automated from integrating a returns order from an online source to determining follow-up actions and refunds. The returns process starts by creating a sales order of the type return order. Using the advanced returns order will enable additional information to be included, which will help determining how the returns process will move forward. The header information on which customer is making the return, a reference and the return date is all entered to ensure that any refunds or replacements will be managed correctly. Information on each line item is also entered. First is the material number, the quantity to be returned. The return reason is then entered. This is a field which can be configured in order to fit your individual business. You select the appropriate follow-up action required for the returned item. The follow-up action determines how the returns process will proceed. With a refund control, you determine when the customer refund will be processed and if there will be any deductions from the sales price. The first item is now completed and we turn our focus on the next items. Again, we fill in the order quantity and the reason for the return. This time it is a damaged product, which will be received into the plant. For this product the customer will receive a credit memo, but the refund will be determined only after inspection. The third product was defective. This product will also be returned to the original supplier, rather than being transferred into our own warehouse. Therefore, in this case, we select the follow-up action ship to vendor. In the refund control we decide that we will only give the customer refund when we in turn have received the credit memo from the supplier. The supplier number is naturally also entered, to make the return logistics work smoothly. The fourth line item to be returned is the mobile phone. This time the return reason is that the wrong item was bought by the customer. The customer refund will be determined only after inspection in this case. The fifth and final item purchased was the PlayStation. The PlayStation return is based on a previous over delivery. It will be returned to the supplier for further processing. The customer refund will again be determined on receiving a credit note from the supplier. The overview screen gives a complete picture of the return process for items and all document numbers which are included in it. Each and every line item for each and every return order will receive its process steps based on the choices made in their respective returns. You can easily follow each step, 
how far each return has been processed. In each and every step you also the upcoming events, for the return. Goods receipt in this process, is made via the returns delivery. In our process we make the simplest of goods receipts, the one where we are not using any additional warehouse functionality. Therefore, we add the quantities manually, directly in the returns delivery document. Eventually we make the goods receipt, through the goods issue button. We use the tile for material inspection in warehouse. Initially we choose to search for the return delivery, in order to bring up our inspection work list. We can see the status of each line item in the return delivery. In order to utilize the full screen for information, we can easily hide the work list. We start off by selecting the first item in our list. The quality inspector chooses the code for OK, and adds a comment, in this case that the goods are in the original packaging. The logistical follow-up is also decided in the inspection. The second item is of quantity 2. These two items are in different conditions, and therefore the return line will be split into two. The inspector chooses the first line. The first of the two pieces does not pass the decision, due to the piece being damaged by the customer. So the inspector chooses the code for not OK, and decides to scrap the piece. The second GPS navigator was in original condition when it was returned, and therefore received as OK. The logistical follow-up actions are also defined, in this case which will be the receiving plant and storage location and in which status should the items be taken in. When the follow-up activity is shipped to supplier, the content from the initial return order is copied, to the material inspection. We briefly look at the two last items being inspected. For example, the items can be sent back to customer for no refund, when the package has been opened. The last item will also be returned to the supplier, like the third item. Next step we are creating the return deliveries to the suppliers. This is done via the return delivery app, and we will in this instance use the purchase order, on which we initially purchase the returned items. As we are running the application online, we can move directly to manage the picking. In this example we are doing the most simple way of picking, which means that we are manually entering the pick quantities in the delivery, before making the goods issue. Next step is that we receive the credit note from the supplier, and enter it into the system, to fulfill the requirement to having received a credit note prior to giving the customer their refund. Now that the credit has been received from the supplier, we can determine how much refund the customer is eligible for. In this scenario we search for the initial returns order. The refund can be redetermined according to company policy and is determined based on the preceding documents. All follow-up actions, return reasons and refund decisions can be reviewed again. And the credit memo to the customer is created, based on the determined refund from the process steps, which were all visible in the return order. The credit memo is later processed, normally as a background job, in order to become a credit note for the customer. As our final review of the advanced returns management process in S4 HANA, we go back to the returns overview screen. This is the screen, which contains a good overview of all the actions which have been taken. In the document, in which we made separate decisions on the two pieces, we can now see that also the returns process has been split up into two. There is one tab for the piece which was returned to stock, and one tab which is for the piece which was scrapped. The functionality shown in this video, regarding advanced returns management, is available in S4 HANA, both cloud and on-premise versions. The same functionality is available also in ECC, although screen layout may differ. Let us complete this video, by repeating the benefits of using advanced returns management. The customer experience will be improved, and by having a uniform and clear returns process, all process steps will be controlled and quickly executable. Having the entire end-to-end -end process visible will give transparency, and clarity, for everyone who must decide on an action. Logistics handling costs is minimized, through limiting the number of touches in the returns process, and replacement and refunds during warranty periods, will be controlled through actual logistics events. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this coming shortly. See you then.